Hey everyone, Patrick McNeil from Oak City Locksport here. Welcome back and thanks for clicking on that clickbait title. So, how can I open mechanical locks with just my phone? Well, sometimes I'll leave my house without my wallet or my keys, but I pretty much always have my phone. It's practically surgically attached to my hand. Many people put some sort of flexible plastic case on their phone made from something like TPE, and I'm no exception. This one I like because it has space for my medical card, licenses, and a couple of credit cards in an external card storage area. Just about enough for any errand. But as you can guess, this video has nothing to do with my actual phone, but instead what is inside. So what if you could have some tools with you, but not have something else kicking around in your pockets that might be bulky or sharp? and you might not want to be super obvious about the fact that you have lock picking tools with you. Well, because this case is flexible and it has the card storage area, I can store a whole host of flat tools inside that I can use to get into all of these locks. So let's take an inventory. First, I have a Sparrow's Flex Pass. All the other tools are actually stored behind the phone so that they don't fall out and they're not super obvious. And we'll set the phone aside. Okay, look at all that. Let's take an inventory here. So I've got a piece of aluminum that I'm going to use for a padlock shim. It's already pre-cut and pre-marked. I have a small decoder. This is super thin. Same form factor, but slightly thicker. This is a knife tool or a quick stick is what it's marketed as. A handcuff shim. A wave rake lock pick. And this was originally a full length pick that I just cut, rounded off the end with a Dremel and then polished it up really nice. And then lastly, We've got a tension wrench here, and what's unique about this tension wrench, it is just a regular pry bar, but it has a comb pick on one end. And you'll see why that's important in a second. So, let's start with some decoding, and we'll pull out the little shim here. This key box was the subject of my previous video. Um, so we'll skip this, but suffice to say, this can be used to open this box. It is just a three-digit combo lock. Instead, let's tackle this basic Brinks padlock. Now you can see that this has four numbers. Currently the combination is 3025. So let's set this to something that I don't know. This has a reset lever on the back. So we'll go ahead and throw that. Scramble that combo up. Okay, so it feels properly seated. We'll set that back and give it another good scramble. So I definitely don't know what the combination is now. Okay, so now we're going to use the decoder and feel for a little notch on the top of each of these wheels. Okay, so I can feel the notch right here on the left and I'm going to do basically the same thing on each of the dials. I want to position the notch in the same place on each of them. Okay, so there's five, zero, Five zero two. Let me see. Yep, that's the same spot. Okay, just felt something there. Five zero two two. Okay. 
Now these, for some reason, if I try to turn them right, they tend to jam up, so we have to go to the left. And we're gonna turn every single dial one number. That's three times four, five. I believe this lock is seven. Oh no, six. So one, six, eight, eight. Easy as that. Now, what's another use for this decoder? Well, the classic Master 175 bypass. You can see a previous video that I did on these Sesame locks. This is the older Master 175, so it's a little bit easier than the newer one. And essentially, for this Master, we're going to insert the decoder on the left side of the third dial, up initially just to uh, get past some of the warding, pull it back, and then angle it downward, and then depress the shackle to take a little bit of pressure off of it, insert it a little deeper, so now it's on top of the uh, metal plate that is in between um, the locking poles push down, angle, and release. All right, we're good to go with the, uh, the shim here. Okay, so the next one is, let's grab the quick stick or knife tool. And so some padlocks have the latch at the back of the padlock exposed. So what we're gonna do is reach past the pins and just try to hit the latch directly. That was pathetically easy, right? Okay, enough on that one. What about a handcuff shim? So it's important to note that with, and this is a Smith & Wesson handcuff, with modern handcuffs, there is um, an initial ratcheting mechanism here. There's a, a locking pawl on the inside. And you can see here, so the locking pawl is the red part the yellow spring pushes into the teeth of the handcuff and it keeps this from being unlocked. However, this blue part is actually what's called the double lock. And you engage the double lock by depressing a button. It's a little difficult to see here. Typically with the back of handcuffs. Most police officers are trained to press that and they're, they're trained to do it under duress. So this will only work if they haven't engaged the double lock. Uh, otherwise, you may be successful by slamming the side of the handcuff on a hard surface to try to disengage it. Otherwise, you have to have secreted a handcuff key on your person or perhaps use a paper clip or a bobby pin to pick in one direction to disengage the double lock and the other to uh, hit the pawl. So if the double lock has not been enabled. You use the shim, push it in between the teeth, push it in one little notch so it gets to push down the pawl, and then you can open right up. All right. What about the shim here? Okay, so basically what I want to do is form a handle, and then this is the shim that I'm going to use on this master combination, kind of like a gym locker lock. So first we'll fold this down. And then wrap these sides around, just for a little extra purchase as a handle. And now we wanna curve this shim. So I'm just gonna put it on the side of the padlock, run it back and forth a little bit. Now the latch is on the left side of these. So I'm gonna pull this out slightly and then put the shim part on the outside. I'm gonna kinda of rock it down in there turn this. 
while pushing in. There we go. Okay, so now we're left with the tension wrench and lock pick. So first off, let's look at this Master 140 padlock. So this actually suffers from uh, an attack that we would call over, um, shoot, I'm spacing on it now, as I say, over lifting, but essentially um, we're gonna take the pins, all four pins here, and push them completely out of the core. There are easier tools to use in this one. So this one was from Sparrows, and you can see it's got a, a four pin and a five pin. Essentially what we wanna do is place the ends of each of these on the bottom of the pins, push them completely out of the core, and turn. So first I'll demonstrate with this one because it's a little bit easier to use. The hardest part is actually getting these teeth lined up with the pins. All right, so you can see that's, that's the exploit. Now let's try it with this. It's a little bit harder to actually grab onto the end here. Okay. Line these up, and you'll, you'll know I've got them lined up when this goes all the way to the bottom. There we go. Okay, now of course, we have to use these as a lock pick. So, this is a shutter lock that you would typically see on a roll down gate on a storefront. I picked this one up in uh, Uruguay. Just a couple seconds, right? Then there's the notorious master number three. These are typically pretty easy to rake. Occasionally you get one that's a little more difficult. They're easy to single pin pick though as well. I don't have one of those. I could have pretty easily, I guess, put one in. All right, took me a couple seconds on that one, but we got it. So the other thing you can use these on, um, wafer locks, like you would have on a desk cabinet, and I will splice in a video of me doing that on my home uh, desk cabinet. And then the very last thing here that we haven't talked about yet is the hall pass. So this is super thin, I think it's um, 12 thousandths, and there are two different uh, attacks for this. So first off, your basic latch loading, you have this curved part that you stick behind a latch and pull. If you have a properly uh, installed dead latch, then this will not work. Um, the, the other attack is if you can't actually see the latch, so there's no, no door gap there, you use this other end and push and hopefully curve it around the uh, door frame and actually push the latch out of the way. Again, properly implemented dead latch, this won't work. So I will link a uh, or splice in a video using this side. All right, that's uh, about everything I have for you. I hope you enjoyed this. Please click like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.